Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. I just memorized that. <laughs> um, so those of you who have the Bible app, um, you may or may not have had that as your verse of the day yesterday. And uh, I would have done this sooner, but I was busy today. But um, yesterday I watched one of uh, Seer slash Prophetess Celestial's videos. Um, so there's a channel called The Master's Voice. Her name is Celestial. She's a seer, and most people don't under don't know that being a seer includes the office of prophet. Um, anyway, um, I agree with most of what she says most of the time, especially what she teaches. Um, and she was hitting home this this principle, this fact, this point um, that those of us. <clears throat> true Christians who are abiding in Christ, exactly this verse, Galatians 5.24. And yes, um, there's something to be said, and I've recently said it, and so have so did one of my subscribers, about, you know, cutting yourself some slack sometimes, you know, um, receiving God's grace, you know. I'm not saying that we are to shame or condemn ourselves or allow other people or the enemy to shame and condemn us. But the point that I just want to make is making Jesus Lord, making the Trinity, Father God, Yahweh, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Lord, is a decision. It's like a meta level, like blanket decision. And then it's like smaller decisions that are specific to certain things, topics, issues, areas, aspects of your being, of your life, of your existence, of your body, soul, and spirit. Um, and we are to pick up our cross and follow him, Jesus. Jesus was a man of sorrows. He was a friend of sorrow, which I believe, isn't that a verse in Isaiah? <clears throat> he himself said that he had nowhere to lay his head. Um, <laughs> how ironic that I just said that and I'm living in a hotel. Um, he even told his disciples, you know, to go out and not take much with them and just, you know, be received and supported and provided for by other people and yada, yada, yada. I don't know why I'm saying that. I guess Holy Spirit wants me to say that. I wasn't planning on getting into all that. But um, you know, the prayer he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane of, you know, not your will, but my will be done. And we all know all this intellectually, but <clears throat> I felt a nudge from Holy Spirit that even though there's other people doing it, teaching this and whatever, doing videos on this, that I was told to do this on my channel. So I was talking recently on this channel about how I feel convicted about eating donuts the last few days, right? Because God, Holy Spirit, officially told me, specifically, to cut out sugar, okay? And <clears throat> because I've been getting hard-pressed on every side lately, um, going through that refining process, um, I'll be honest and confess that I have uh, become a little hypocritical. I have backslid a little. I have, I have slacked off a little in my self-control, my self-discipline. Um, and I don't want to keep beating that dead horse, but um, for those who have been tracking with me each video. But the point that I make, and, and I, I had a subscriber say, oh, you know, April, you're, you're too hard on yourself. And I want to be clear, I'm not being snarky towards that, that person at all, um, because I do appreciate the positive support, and I do 
appreciate the reminder, you know, to give myself, you know, to, to receive God's grace, you know. Um, that's why we need a Savior in the first place, okay? Because none of us is going to be perfect or, you know, get it right all the time or whatever, right? Um, but I do just want to say that I, I want to inform and or remind everyone that that is the true path of a Christian. That is the straight and narrow path. That is the narrow gate that Jesus spoke of that he said most won't find, okay? Um, and then I, I also read um, Elizabeth Marie's newsletter today. <clears throat> Her channel is Ladder Rain 333 you know, and she was kind of harping on the the same thing and so you know you know how one holy spirit will just kind of like confirm something like one thing after another and so it was just like i i heard celestial talking about it i was talking about it or i was talking about it then i heard celestial talking about it and then elizabeth marie was talking about it you know so you know two's a witness three's a confirmation this needs to be emphasized okay we are about to head into the tribulation in about a month the tribulation period starts about mid-September, I believe, and many believe. Um, and it's going to be the worst time on earth at some point. Um, there's going to be famine and starvation and cannibalism and war and <clears throat> fallen angels and zombies and... You know, um, people have had dreams and visions of werewolves, and there's going to be captivity going on, and, and just all kinds of horrible things. And so God, lately, um, has been telling me a lot of things, particularly per pertaining to my diet, and I'm not the only prophetess or seer that he's been telling this to. Um, I know of two or three other prophetesses that I've seen on YouTube that God has given the same message to along the same lines, pretty much. And Lisa of Sabbath Sabbath Seekers, um, I don't think she's shared anything officially on her channel, but I know in a private email she had shared with me that she had been kind of um, working with God regarding her diet, you know, and certain things. So again, this is just a thing, something that God has been confirming all over the place. God is telling us to get our, you know, to uh, crucify our flesh to exert self-control and self-discipline, which is a which is a uh, fruit fruit of the Holy Spirit. I keep calling it a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Um, it's what is produced when you are natural, when you are growing close to God, and you have made the conscious, conscientious, cognizant, intentional decision to make Jesus Lord, to make the Trinity Lord, not just Savior. Okay. When you are going into the depths of the marriage between you and God, what is produced are, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which includes self-control, self-discipline. Um, and so it just makes sense that God is telling us all these things about, like, for example, our diets. Well, we're going into a famine. And we know that all the food is pretty much messed with and poisoned and yada, yada, yada. So, again... In order to, to be obedient to any being, you have to trust that being. Well, if we trust God, we know that God is telling us these things for our own good, for our own benefit. And the benefit here really isn't hard to, it, it's not difficult to ascertain. He's telling us things for our own physical well-being, physiological well-being, okay? Because what happens physically does affect your soul, Okay, your your mind, your emotions, and, and all of that. Um, and so I, I comprehend that some people may be laughing at me or rolling their eyes at me or scoffing or, or not, not like nasty, but, you know, just some people may think, that, you know, that I'm making a big deal out of nothing by saying that I feel convicted about eating donuts when God told me to give up sugar. But when you have a real, true, intimate relationship with God, and you know darn well what he has told you, and you don't do what you're told, you feel that conviction. And again, there's a difference between conviction from the Holy Spirit. It's a gentle, loving nudge. There's a difference between that and shame and condemnation that comes from the enemy. Okay? 
um, shame and condemnation fuels the cycle of um, disobedience. It fuels the cycle of self-sabotage or sabotage in, in, in general. It fuels the cycle of addiction, okay? Whereas conviction from the Holy Spirit, it is gentle, it is soft, it is a nudge. It's because God's not controlling. God's not codependent. God's not controlling. God's not toxic like the enemy is, okay? God will not force you. God tells me to give up sugar, and I just decide that I'm not going to give up sugar. Well, then I have to deal with the consequences of that. Consequences of that is, well, let's see. Right now, I'm personally trying to detox from uh, mold. Sugar feeds mold, so I'm kind of being, you know, being counterproductive to, toward my goal of detoxing from mold right now. Sugar, um, not only all the obvious stuff of like your, your blood sugar level, diabetes, all that kind of crap, but most people don't know that sugar actually leads to what? Dementia. Mm hmm Okay? So I'm just kind of giving like, I'm, I'm using this as an example, but... I just can't emphasize it enough of like, we're at crunch time right now. So yes, Galatians 5.24, those who are Christ's, those who belong to Christ, those who have made Christ Lord, those who are abiding in Christ, those who are in, who are grafted into the vine of Christ, they pick up their cross, they follow Jesus, and they crucify their flesh with its passions and desires. I'm debating going into the whole Gentile Jew thing. I'm going to touch on that real quick, okay? Yes, everything does boil down to DNA, but when it comes to spiritually speaking, okay, so many people are deceived. They have this religious spirit, they have this legalistic spirit, these demons of legalism and religion and they think that oh you know their bloodline goes all the way back to whatever uh, you know this tribe that tribe and you know <sighs> I don't have the verses with me right now but if you read all of scripture what is Paul I'm pretty sure it's Paul say in the New Testament that there is neither male nor female Jew nor Gentile yada 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 right what makes you a Jew? You, could be, you become born again through your faith in Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. That's what makes you a quote-unquote spiritual Jew. Okay, On Judgment Day, God is not going to give a crap about who was a, a Jew in the natural. That makes no difference to him. He opened up his kingdom to all human beings. Okay, If you really know God, you know that God is love. So why would he have some kind of prejudice against other human beings? Like, just, just think about that. The whole reason he set that up in the Old Testament was for teaching purposes of, um, it, I'm not going to get into all, all the complexity, but the point is, is that it's not a matter of what, what, whether or not you think you, you are a descendant of a certain tribe of Israel or not. It's a matter of, do you have faith in Jesus the Christ of Nazareth? Are you born again? And not only have you made him Savior, but have you made him Lord? Okay, Lord means Lord of your life. It means he's your master. It means you submit to him, okay? I saw a video last year, and this lady was talking about how, you know, like, basically, here's how you know whether or not you can submit to a man in terms of, like, her, like, picking, like, a husband, you know, not picking a husband, but... That's a bad way to put it, because God picks your husband. But uh, anyway, the point she was making was, you know you can submit to a man if you can respect him, okay? Do you have that respect, okay? we it's in, in scripture or in Christian lingo, we call it the fear of God. It means respect. It means a deep reverence, okay? And that ties into... Conviction. Now, I have a very real and raw relationship with God. 
I was just talking to God in the car today. I'm like, you know, Lord, you're really asking a lot of me lately. <laughs> because he, he is. He's been, like, telling me, like, stop eating this, stop eating that. He officially told me to stop listening to secular music. And, like, as I'm driving around, I have different, sec you know, different secular songs popping in my head. And last year, because I was having memory problems with my phone and I didn't realize I had to take stuff out of the garbage and da-da-da, I took my, my iTunes off my phone and I, ne I never put it back on. And so I sat today in a parking lot or whatever and um i played a secular song on youtube that i had popped in, that, that popped in my head and then after i listened to it it was stuck in my head for a while but you know what i realized that the chorus of that song had like a lie slash vow in it and i was like okay lord you know what's best i i see now why you want me to cut this out because now i have that chorus which is a lie slash vow stuck in my head and that's what's, you know, playing on repeat in my head now. Like, okay, yeah, see, that is the opposite of renewing your mind. It's, it's, it's renewing your mind with garbage. You don't want to be renewing your mind with garbage. You want to be renewing your mind with the mind of Christ, right? With, with uh, godly things, healthy things, productive things. Um, I am so rambling. But <laughs> the point that I'm making is pick up your cross, make Jesus Lord, and take your relationship with him seriously. Trust that, he's, that he knows what's best. And trust that he is trying to prepare you for what is about to happen. Because I don't think, as much as we all have some notion, some intellectual notion, when stuff really, really, really starts happening, I don't think our hearts are going to be prepared. And so God is trying to get us as prepared as possible in all the different ways. Okay? Um, but yes... It could be something as so trivial as don't eat donuts, don't eat sugar. Why? Because that's healthy for your body and therefore healthy for your soul. Okay? Um, so anyway, I'm kind of... Uh, I feel like I'm not articulating this as best I could. I'm just kind of winging it, which is what I usually do. Um, but we need to be taking this seriously, guys. And I have been, just lately, I'm kind of slacking off, and I feel like a hypocrite lately. Um, but yeah, if God told you to stop listening to secular music, then you stop listening to secular music. If God told you to stop eating sugar, stop eating pork, only eat kosher, go vegetarian, whatever he told you, do it. And if you're struggling, then that's the whole point of that is to draw you closer to him to be seeking inner healing and deliverance and integration and all of that. And if you need help with that, I have a playlist and I'm going to be doing some more teaching in the future. And you can always email me. I can send you some, some resources. I have a bunch of stuff on my Google Drive and whatnot. And I mean, yeah, like really the best way I can minister to someone is face to face in person. But I'll, I'll do what I can to help you at least point you in the right direction. Um, fast. If you're struggling with something, fast. I need to take my own advice right now. Um, I really do. I'm, if, I feel like such a hypocrite right now. I, I really, really do because I'm slacking off so bad lately. Um, you know, I told myself when I moved to Tennessee that I was going to do a 40 day, uh, like Daniel fast, like a, a vegan, vegetarian, whatever fast. And because of the circumstances, I haven't done that. And there's no reason why I can't be doing that just because I'm living in a hotel, but I'm using that as an excuse of like, oh, it didn't go the way I thought, blah, 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 right? Like we all, we all make excuses, but like, but we're, we're, we are accountable for that either in this lifetime or on judgment day and the rest of eternity, depending on what we're talking about, right? Um, Jesus said, I came to give you life abundantly that, didn't, that doesn't just mean heaven, the new earth. It means in this lifetime. But you have to submit. You have to surrender. You have to respect him. You have to revere him. You have to make him Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. That song, Jesus Take the Wheel, right? That's making him Lord. <clears throat> it's putting his, his decision, his will for you, just like Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. We have to live th that same way. Pick up your cross and follow him. Crucify your flesh. Whatever addictions, whatever it is, fornication, masturbation, marijuana, nicotine, kratom, sugar. Whatever. 
whatever it is for you, there are roots. There are roots that sometimes you would never imagine are tied in or related to whatever it is. I'm trying to think of examples right now that I've had. I, I've had a few where Holy Spirit revealed what one of the roots was or what, what one of the contributing roots was and I was like, what? Like, you'd, you'd be surprised the like mental emotional stuff that is at the very root of whatever your habit or addiction is or, or whatever. Um, and that's what you got to press in. You got to press in and ask God, okay, like, you know, Paul says to rip out the roots of bitterness and that's regarding, you know, unforgiveness and all that. But there's roots to everything we do. Every ungodly thing you do, every, every sin you do, there's roots and those roots need to be ripped out. Ask him what they are. I'm going on 20, over 20 minutes now. Um... Holy Spirit, is there anything else that I'm forgetting here? I'm hearing the word repent. Repent means turn around. It means make a U-turn. Go back the way you came. And I heard some messed up logic from somebody, like, weeks ago. Because um, they were they were only looking at, they were only comprehending and, and all that in like, in a strictly intellectual way, in, instead of coming at it with their heart. And they were like, oh, well, if you keep making a U-turn, then you're just going in a circle. Da -da 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 -da. And like, that's just a way of deflecting like spiritual truths. So if, if you're one of those people who's going to sit there and, and say something like that, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but Holy Spirit says repent. Holy Spirit is saying repent. Now is the time to repent. Seriously. Now is the time. Now is the time to, uh, stop procrastinating. And if you can, reach out to somebody, uh, you know, for accountability. If you have someone around, that can be your accountability partner, that can encourage you and can maybe disciple you, discipline you, you know, kind of compliment you where maybe you're, you're weak right now, reach out to that person, okay? Um, I feel like I'm not completely with it right now. I feel like I'm not doing this topic justice, but... But anyway, God wanted me to address this, and I just felt the the urgency, and I, I, I needed to come home tonight and, like, eat and whatever, and, um, and I'm still not completely with it because I didn't get enough sleep and everything, but God is saying to repent. Pick up your cross, crucify your flesh. Go to him and ask him, what do you need to crucify? What needs to die? What needs to die? Because we don't just come to the cross, we have to go through the cross. Okay? Jesus went through death to resurrection. When we get baptized, it is a, a visual, a representation of how we are dying with Christ. We go down into the water, just like Christ went down into the earth. Okay? And then we come back up to resurrection born again to a resurrected life. But it's an ongoing process of you surrendering to him, of you submitting to him, of you going to him and saying, okay, you know what? I'm serious, God. I'm ready to make you Lord, not just Savior. Where do we begin? And Jesus... <laughs> I could just picture Jesus smiling and like, you know, playfully kind of rubbing his hands together and be like, all right, I've been waiting for this. Let's go. You know, like, because God loves us so much. And it, I know a lot of people can probably relate to this, but have you ever known someone where like, you, you love them so much, you care about them so much, you see the potential and you want to help them. But you can't force them, and you know that. And and it would just be so wonderful for them to just voluntarily come to you or, or see them go to somebody and just say, Hey, I, I, 
I want to change, I need some help, you know, like, that's, that's Jesus' heart, like, he is so ready to receive you, like, once you say that you want to make him Lord, he is going to start putting his finger on stuff in your life, so be ready for that, okay, be ready for it, um, and he knows what you can handle, and he'll, he'll go in, like, he, he knows you, he knows you better than you know yourself, so he'll know where to start, But, but be ready. Be ready. And there is sometimes a supernatural element to it. I'll, I'll say this. Um, for example, when I was younger, uh, and I've mentioned this before on my channel, um, I used to smoke weed. I only did it socially. I think I only purchased it once or twice, maybe three times in my whole life. And it was always like, I just immediately like shared it with everybody at, at whatever gathering I was at or whatever. Like I was one of those social, you know, kind of partakers. Um, and I was kind of dwindling off getting away from that, but I would still here and there or whatever. And I kind of knew that I, like I, I had, and I was not close. I was nowhere near walking with God like I am now back then but I had a sense that it was like I think I think that's that's done you know like I, I had a sense and so all of a sudden when I would every now and then still partake I would get these migraines these like just horrendous migraines and I was like oh my gosh and yes I know some people are going to be like oh you probably just got some bad stuff or whatever no it was God it was the Holy Spirit saying you're done you're done with this. <laughs> Sometimes God will just do that on his own. And you can also ask him, like, Lord, I need help. Like, I really want to be done with this, but I'm really struggling here. Will you step in? Will you intervene? He's merciful. He's faithful. Okay? Um, all these things that we struggle with, they're all false comforters. I harped on that recently in a video. You don't want to have the false comforter. You want the real comforter. That's the Holy Spirit. Um, and certain things, like I said before, uh, regarding like marijuana, alcohol, drugs, uh, you know, that stuff blocks out the Holy Spirit. It doesn't just like act as like a substitute, but it like blocks Holy Spirit. So you really want to be careful because how can you abide in Christ if you're blocking Holy Spirit? You can't, okay? So anyway, God just wanted me to... to to punctuate Galatians 5.24. Go meditate on that. Go look it up in different translations. Meditate on it. Pray about it fast. Start. Make a decision today. If you haven't already. Lord, I want to make. Lord, I, I want you to be Lord. Jesus, Yahweh, Holy Spirit. I want you to be Lord in my life. I give you that place in my life. I make you Lord of my life. I invite you in. To every aspect of my being, of my life, of my existence, my body, my soul, my spirit, my relationships, my finances, my diet, my habits, my addictions, my job, my marriage, whatever. You invite him in and you'll see things are going to start happening. And I want to remind you that, yes, there is the verse that says that we are pressed on all sides, okay? And pick up your cross, it's not always pleasant. That's part of the narrow gate, is sorrow, suffering. The definition of suffering is anytime you are denying the flesh. Galatians 5.24. Denying the flesh. That means no more donuts. <laughs> it means no more fornicating, no more masturbation, no more marijuana, no more drugs, no more alcohol, no more nicotine, whatever it is. <sighs> All right, Holy Spirit, is there anything else you want me to say? All right, half an hour. Seems to be my average time lately. All right, I bless you all in Jesus' name, and if you need help with anything, shoot me an email. I'm getting a lot of emails lately. It's kind of nice. <laughs> um, I feel I feel like I'm actually making a difference to, to people lately. You know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback, and that, that, that gives me at least a sense of purpose, even though my personal life just sucks right now. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, if you have questions or you just, you know, maybe like, I have a whole bunch of resources again. So shoot me an email. You need help? I'll, I'll, I can send you some stuff. And um, especially if you're new, if there's certain topics or whatever, um, you can search to see if I've done a video on it or just shoot me an email and I'll, I'll send you whatever I got on, on that topic or whatever. All right. I bless you all in Jesus' name.